You're about to hear a message from one of our experiences right here at Hope Church on Sunday morning. But before you watch, before you do that, hold up. Click the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the videos we're going to be dropping every single week. We hope you enjoy this message. Today I have a word um, that's still in the same, in the same boat series. Um, I've been, I just thank God he's been speaking. It's amazing, you know, when you read the word of God, just the things he'll show you, you know, within certain uh, themes, certain lenses that you see it through. And I encourage you, when you read the word of God, um, I want you to encourage you, you should always try to read the word of God according to your appetite. Where are you hungry? You should study according to your ailments. Where are you hurting? And study to your assignments. Where do you need help? That's how you should study the Bible. It gives you a good reference of where do I even start? Well, where are you hungry? Maybe you've got to make some decisions in this season. Go study the word of God on wisdom. Amen? So that's just something to encourage you with when you study the Bible. Go to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I'm going to read 11 verses. And, um, and, and I'm just, I'm so, just I feel overflowing today. And... Uh, just an exciting time. I hope you'll come to the concert on October 24th, uh, tw 21st, excuse me, 21st, 21st, 21st. My God, got ahead of myself. October 21st uh, with Chandler Moore of Maverick City Music. I'll be here. Um, hopefully you got your tickets. You'll hear more about that later, but Bishop will tell you about it. Um, and uh, I'm so excited about that. Then we're doing a worship workshop the very next day, and um, that's free to the public, but a lot of churches are going to be bringing their worship teams to come and be ministered to from Chandler. So we're excited. Luke 5, verse number 1. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. Somebody say he got in. Which was Simon's, and he asked him to put out a little from land. And he sat down, and he taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was what? Their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. Everybody say this next phrase. From now on. That does something for me. From now on. I don't know what happened before, but from now on. I don't know what your life light was before today, but from now on. All right, let me, I got to. From now on, you will catch men. Huh? So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. I'm going to preach a message today that I want to tell your neighbor, turn to your neighbor and tell him I caught something. I caught something. Lord, open our ears and our hearts. We're ready to receive your word. And we give you praise for 35 years of ministry. God, we thank you for 35 more and beyond. And Lord, this is just the beginning of what you are doing. And I declare an atmosphere of breakthrough in this place. Lord, breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. One more time, tell the person next to you, I caught something. Tell the person on the other side whose breath smells better, I caught something. This story, and, I, and I'm careful to say this word, but it is because we hear it so often, I think, and it's one of the more, if I could say, famous and familiar stories, I think, of, of Jesus doing something um, and his disciples. Well, there aren't disciples yet, but there are people that he has, has called. And 
is something unique that takes place here with Simon Peter and in his boat. It, it's amazing, and, and I'm not going to play around too long with, the, with this. I'm going to jump right into it if that's all right. I just really believe that, that there is something today in regards to your life that you're going to catch today. There's gonna be, you're going to catch something. I believe there's some vision that's going to be caught today. I believe there's some hope that's going to be caught today. I believe, I believe there's some restoration that's going to be caught today. I believe there's healing that's going to be caught today. I believe that, but I believe that, that favor, you're going to catch some favor today and realize you're not the bottom, you're above. And realize you're not the below, you're, you're, you're the top. Amen? That you're going to catch something today. Uh, and that's how you have to approach the word of God. I'm about to catch something. Something's about to stick to me. I, something is about to jump into my spirit that I'm not going to be able to shake loose. I'm not going to be able to let go of because I'm about to catch something. Somebody say, I'm going to catch something. And Peter is on the shore. Jesus is, 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 the Bible says, he has traveled through Galilee and he comes to the shores one day. And all the people are trying to hear what he's trying to say. He's, he's preaching and people are right there on the beach. And there's Jesus talking to him, and he looks around. He looks around to try to find out, uh, how, can I, how can I take this situation to the next level? How can I get the gospel? How can I get the word out even more? How many know over 35 years, you've got to come up with creative ways to get the gospel out? you got to come up with creative ways. That's why technology is so important. That's why what we do with our productions and technology is so critical. And, and why we have cameras and why we have lights and things like that. Because it helps produce something for the people who are on the shores and can't be in the boat. <laughs> for the people who are at home who can't make it. For the people in another country who can't make it. Right now as we speak and as we sit here, there are people literally watching this live all over the world. There are people who are getting saved weekly through our online because, because somebody looked around and said, we need to get and, and, and use a different method. That's what I love about church, this church. It's always tried to adapt methods that produced a greater impact through the gospel. It helped, it helped catch some people in a net because somebody was obedient along the way to say, we, we, we can't stay stuck in just how it always has been. We can't stay stuck in how it, we've always done it. We've got to utilize some Holy Spirit-inspired methods. We've got to use some methods that might seem unorthodox to some, and that's okay. We'll be fine being unorthodox to man, but when God gets a hold of something unorthodox, the Bible says he'll use something foolish. He'll use pe what people call foolish. He'll use it. <laughs> so be careful if you're sitting next to somebody who you think is foolish. He'll be, that'll be the next person he uses. You could be sitting, I'll be foolish all day long if he wants to use me. And so you've got to understand even in your life that there are times you've got to adapt. You've got you to be flexible in the methods of which God is doing things in your life. And when he says to do something different, do something unique that nobody else may, may, put, their opinion, they may not put their approval on it. They might not give their approval on it. That's okay. Uh, but but the, the method uh, is still producing a greater impact. Somebody say impact. And Jesus is looking around, and he sees the need of the people. And, and, and ultimately, the methods that change are there for that purpose, to meet the needs of people. It's not for a performance. It's not for a show. It's always to meet the needs of people. Something in your life, the gift of God on your life, is there to meet needs for people. That is part of what God does. He wants to put a, he puts a gift in you to help meet the needs of those around you. You are a need meter. You are, uh, you are a person, you are a gift walking uh, in, in power to meet a need. And so Jesus is looking around. He sees the multitude and they're pressing in and his feet are getting wet now. And he's turning around and saying, well, I, I can't really um, go back. Well, he could. He could have just walked out on the water and stood there. He could have just made the, the water his platform. He's done that, right? He could have just walked on out there. See, isn't it amazing? God can do anything he wants, but he still wants to use your boat. Isn't it amazing? God could do anything he wants at a moment's notice, but yet he takes the time to look around and say, let me use you. I could do this myself, but, but I want to use what you got. I want to use your boat. I, I, I see you're not in your boat right now because you think you're done. Because the nets were being washed. They, were, they had been fishing all night, Peter said. He told him, he said, we've been fishing all night. We haven't caught Nothing. That's why they're in the water and, and, and washing out the nets. They're trying to, to, to clean the nets because they are done. 
they're finished. They, they feel like, all right, we're done for the day. I've been out there all night. It's morning now. They go out fish at night because the water's cooler and it's easier to catch fish at that time. And so that's why they're coming out, uh, coming back to the shores after a night of fishing. And Jesus sees what they have and he says, you know, I could, I could just make this whole situation better myself, but let me use this guy over here. Let me use the one who said he's done. Let me use the one that said he was too much of an addict for me to use. Let me use the one who said he was too much of a failure for me to use. Let me use the one that has been uh, uh, down in the dumps, down in the miry clay, down in problems, down in issues. Let me use that person that everybody else says can't be used anymore, and he thinks he's done, and she thinks he's done, but that's exactly the person I want to use. Case in point, let me take a drug dealer, let me take a drug addict and radically save his life and have him start a church in Perry, Georgia. But before he starts a church, I'm going to go use him to go preach in prisons when nobody else is there to see it. He's going to go preach in prisons and, and preach preach prisoners free in the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to take that ex-drug dealer and that ex-drug addict and that ex-partier and I'm going to radically change his life. People that said he was done. People that know his life and said he can't make it back from what he did. I'm going to use his boat to catch a whole lot of fish. Why? Because I see a need in the region that can be met. I just came to tell somebody he's looking, he's looking for a boat. Yeah, he, he's looking for a boat that he can use. Somebody say, can he use your boat? I'm going to ask somebody, can he use your boat? And he's looking around at how he can make this impact even greater, and he locks eyes on two boats. He locks eyes on two boats, and it says, they pressed about, and he saw two boats standing by the lake, and the fishermen had gone from them washing their nets. And he don't even ask Peter. He just gets in the boat. He don't even ask Peter. He just gets in the boat. But then he asks Peter, uh, after he gets done teaching, to go out to the deep. It's funny. Jesus don't ask permission to get into his boat. And he says, put out a little from land. And so he sits, he sits down and he teaches. He sits down and he, and he, and he teaches. Uh, write this down. The Lord wants to use what's yours to get what's his. The Lord wants to use what's yours to get what's his. You have something the Lord wants to use in order to get what's his. What's his? People. What's his? People. He wants to use what's yours to get what's his. He's fulfilling kingdom work, and he's preaching, and he's teaching. And watch this. Can you imagine being Simon Peter? you got this man right here, this great, amazing person that is making impact right there around where you live, and you're sitting right next to him in the boat. You're hearing what he's saying, and you're looking at all the people like, this is incredible. I could get used to this. Where else do we need to row to? Let's just let's row on down the shore. Let's start a beach cruise. Let's, let's just start a beach tour. Let's just do that. Let's just stay on the coast. Let's do a coast tour. A, a Coast for Christ tour. Come on, Jesus. I can get used to this. What you need? I can sit right here all day. Listen to you preach. Look at all these people. We need to capitalize on this. And he gets done teaching. And he says, um, let's go out where nobody can see us. Let's, let's, let's launch out into the deep. Isn't it amazing when he was close enough to the shore, he just had to put out a little bit? And then it came time to go deeper. He said he had to launch. He puts out a little bit when it's safe. I can still see my support system. But I just came to tell you that Hope Church is not a church who stays near the shore. If you're looking for that, and if you're looking for safety, this might not be the place. But year after year, after decade after decade, God has constantly called this house, and he's called people in this house to go a little deeper. 
to launch out a little further. Yeah, it takes a little bit to put out a little bit from the shore, uh, but, but he's calling people to a place to, 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 it's a place that don't make sense. It's a place where you have to launch out. You, you, you got you to gotta start it when you don't have an audience. You got to start it when you don't see the resources. You got to start it. And he's calling Peter to launch out into the deep. Now, this don't, this, in Peter's human mind, read the text as a human. Okay? Don't always look at it from the perspective of Jesus. I just messed some of y'all up. Like, what? <clears throat> Read the Bible through a human lens. Act like, like, think about that. If I'm in this boat and, all, and I've been fishing all night, and now all of a sudden you're telling me, let's go out to the deep, all of us right, are going to be just like Peter. You're going to be like, yes, Savior, let's go. Let's do it. Yes, yes. <laughs> you want me to do something that doesn't make sense? Sure. Because it doesn't make sense. We've been fishing all. That's when fishermen fish, Jesus. It's daytime. We don't fish during the day. That's why when you saw us, we were washing our nets. Because we're about to go home and sleep and then come back again and work the graveyard shift. Because that's when fishermen fish. Jesus, what you're saying to me to do doesn't make sense. You want me to go forgive them? Do you know what they did to me, Jesus? Do you know what they posted about me passive-aggressively? Because they didn't have the guts enough. Oh, my God. Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost just kicked in with wisdom. They didn't have the guts enough to mention my name. You, but you want me to forgive. I know it's too real for some of y'all. But, but, but you, want me to, you want me to forgive them. You want me to forgive them when nobody's looking? You want me to do something? You want me to give to somebody in need when I need stuff myself? You want me to buy groceries for that family when all I got is day-old milk in my refrigerator? You, you want me to help somebody when I need help? That don't make sense. In the same way it don't make sense to plant a church in a region that's full of racism and attack racism and start with 10 white people in a trailer about the size of this altar. That don't make sense, Jesus. Why would we ever do that? Why would we ever do Don't you need resources first before you do something? And see, that's where some of us are at. We're waiting to launch out when we have everything we need. We're waiting to launch out and do something by faith when we see the pathway, when we know what it looks like, when we have enough money, when we know the right people. And can I tell you, God just... just does it work that way? Um, I, don't have, I don't claim to have the corner lot on how I know how God works, but I, I, I've lived long enough and lived for him long enough to find out that it's when you start to move in faith that he begins to provide the things you need along the way. <laughs> Somebody say, launch out. <laughs> launch out into the deep. Jesus, the crowd's right here. What's wrong, Peter? I was okay obeying you when everybody was watching. I was okay being nice when the pastor walked in. I was okay being faithful when the boss stopped by my cubicle. I was okay talking good about that person when they were in front of me. I was, I was good when there was a crowd, but now you're asking me to do something when nobody can see me. And you're asking me to do something that don't make sense when nobody can see me and applaud me for doing it once the results come. And maybe that's where God is wanting you. 
Maybe he's wanting to take you out to the deep to deal with your ego. Maybe he's wanting to take you out to the deep to deal with your pride, to deal with your bitterness, to deal with some things. Before we come back to shore, the Lord got to deal with you on some things in this boat. He's got to take you out where there's no distractions, there's no opinion, there's no other thing that can pull you away from what he's instructing you, instructing you to do. And he's saying, I'm going to ask you to do something that nobody else can see. It's just going to be me and you, and I need you to obey me. Can you, can you believe and can you obey God through faithfulness in an obscure place? When nobody is there to cheer for you. When nobody is there to applaud that you cast to the net. When nobody is there to celebrate, oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, that you, uh, that you did something right. No, can you be in, a person of integrity in private? Can you be a person of godly character when nobody is watching? Can you launch out into the deep and still do it when nobody sees it? That's where God does some of his best work. That's where the anointing comes from. That's where the anointing and the power comes from. It's launching out into the deep and saying, Jesus, if you don't do this, if you don't move on my heart, if you don't speak to me, if you don't show me what to do, I not, don't know what I'm going to do next. And then when you get alone with God and you get alone in his presence, he brings you back to the shore. So when you step off that boat, you're walking in a different authority. You're walking in a different power. You're walking with a pure heart and clean hands. Your motives are pure. Now you're walking. In a, in a right place. And he wants to take some of us out to the deep to deal with our issues. Because I found out, not only, is, not only does he deal with our issues in the deep, he deals with your doubt. You want me to, you want me, listen, how about this? Now we become experts. You stick to teaching I'll stick to fishing. Fishing is what I know, Jesus. And you're telling me to do something that isn't going to equate to a catch. So, so you know how we start trying to tell God stuff? Yeah. Like he don't know? Yeah. Like we try, try to tell God, now you know I don't have enough. Have you seen what I'm dealing with? How, do you, and we, we become experts all of a sudden. And the, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and, and, and told me to tell some people that he wants to deal with that expert in you. Translation, he wants to deal with the know-it-all in you. Some of us know too much for God to use us. They didn't like that, RJ. They, 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 wanna, they, they, they didn't like that part. There was like six people over here that clapped. Um, and he, he wants to deal with the know-it-all in you. Because some of us got to know too many details for the miracle to happen. Some of us got to know every detail. I'm not saying do your homework. I ain't telling you not to study. I'm not telling you not to prepare because that's part of faith. You've got to prepare like it's already there. But, but there's going to be times where you're going to have to let down your expertise and let down that know-it-all that you got talking in your brain and say, God, this don't make sense, but nevertheless. Nevertheless, I'm going to do it at your word. Nevertheless, it don't make sense to do this. It don't make sense to start this church here. It don't make sense to run this business this way. It don't make sense to give to that. It don't make sense to forgive. It don't make sense, but nevertheless, at your word. God wants to deal with the know-it-all in you. And some of us are locked out of miracles because we're so locked into our own knowledge and expertise. He wants to deal with the know-it-all in you. Simon Peter, you know too much right now. I'm not saying you shouldn't have knowledge, but Peter's trying to tell him, we've been fishing all night. This is what we do, Jesus. You stick to what you do. I, obviously, Jesus, your teaching is what you do because people come to hear that. Fishing is what I do. I got it. I'm going to handle this one. Um, Peter, real quick. Evidently, the way you've been doing it hasn't been bringing anything in. Because if, if the way you were doing it was the right way, you would have had to catch a fish. Evidently, the way you've been doing it ain't working either. 
And how quick are we to criticize something we don't understand? And how quick are we to criticize what God wants to do, a new method, a new way? How quick are we to criticize something and we stand from a distance and we make judgments about something we have not been involved in, that we have no clue about, and we can't understand, well, why is God doing that? I can't understand people doing church that way. I don't understand why that, 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 and they just start, we just go to run in our mouth and we start to criticizing things that we have no clue about. Hey, Peter, I know you used to fish at night, but how's that going for you? How's your way going for you? How's your way going? One of the things I'm working on this season is living unoffended. Unoffended. But it's not that, that you're not going to be offended because Jesus said offenses would come. It's the choice to live unoffended. If we're supposed to bless our enemies, if they do the worst thing to us, if they do the worst of the worst, see, some of us try to justify it, and we call it righteous anger. You're a liar. You're just mad and, and, and ticked off and want to stay angry and want to stay bitter at something. Live unoffended. How quick are you to forgive? Some of us, it's been years. And the poison is seeping out. For some of us, it's been years, and the bitterness is oozing out of you in every conversation, and every thought, and every word that comes out. It's laced with bitterness. It's laced with poison. Because you're still living offended. And you hadn't let the Lord take you out into the deep and deal with. Come on, somebody say, I caught something. Jesus, this is far as I go. That's what some of us are telling the Lord. I'm not going out to the deep. This is as far as I go. I'm happy just to serve on Sundays. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm happy to just come sit, get the word, shout amen, preach. You better preach. I had one time somebody shout, you better preach, white boy. <laughs> well, hey, I'll take what I can get, I guess. <laughs> I'll take it. I've had worse things said to me. I'll take that. That's, hey. And some of us are telling the Lord, who knows what's out in the deep for you, this is as far as I go with you. And yet he knows what's out in the deep for you. And some of us are right here like, this is as far as I go. Don't ask me to do nothing else, Jesus. I feel, and you start validating your own commitment level. When he said, come die with me. See, we get to this part, we get quiet. Because we think the success is in what the public people see. We think the success is on the platform. We think the success is, is when the crowds are watching and everybody can see the success. No, the success is when you pick up the cross and bleed. Is this as far as you go? Because he's calling you out into the deep. He's in your boat. He could have did it another way, but he wanted to use what you had. And now he's calling you further. Will you go further? Is there further for you? Or is there limitations around what you're willing to offer and what you're willing to surrender and what you're willing to give? Can you surrender the habits? Can you surrender the porn addiction? Can you surrender the alcohol? Can you surrender the lying? Can you surrender the gossiping? Can you surrender the mental thought patterns that just eat up your brain all day long? That you don't even, you're, you're a robot and you're on autopilot thinking about stuff all day. Just, you're just doing stuff by muscle memory. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. Launch out to the deep. 
Launch out. You can only get so much right here by the shore. There's more out there. And Peter does something that I believe is going to happen to some of us today. You've been telling God why it's not possible. You've been telling God why it can't happen. You've been telling God all the stuff you don't have, all the things that are not there, which, like, he don't know. And today, you're going to say, nevertheless. It's not going to be my calculations. It's going to be your power. It's not going to be what I can mathematically equate and scientifically put together. It's going to be the next thing God does in you is going to be something that you cannot explain. One day, I was sitting there on the shore, and here comes this man, and he said, I need to use your boat. I got in the boat with him. He taught a bunch of people, and then he said, let's go deeper. I told him, I told him we've been fishing all night. I told him it didn't make sense. Tilapia don't swim at that time of the day. And so we're just not, this ain't going to work. But I did it anyway, and I went out there, and the Bible says, when they let down the nets. Watch this. Don't miss this point. Because there have been, there's been seasons in Peter's life where he has been casting but catching nothing. He's been casting. He just came off a night where he casted all night long but caught. He's been casting. You know what the Lord showed me? That there are seasons where you cast where you don't immediately catch. I'm talking to somebody right now who's been casting. You're weary from casting. You're weary from going out and showing up and casting the net and being faithful. You're, you're weary from showing up day after day and just being faithful to the call of God in your life. You're weary and you've been casting and you're wondering, Lord, when am I going to see some catching? And I just want to encourage you. There are some seasons where your faithfulness and your commitment is being tested in the casting and you don't see a catch immediately. But he just wants to know, can you do it when no one's looking. Who are you doing it for? Who are you showing up for? Are you doing it with the right heart? Because if you can do it out in the deep when nobody's watching, then he can trust you with the catch he wants to bring in. Maybe for some of us, you are not being able to be trusted yet with the catch because you still got some more casting to do. Because you don't immediately catch in the same season sometimes that you cast. In some seasons, it's just a faithfulness to cast. It's a faithfulness to throw the net and come up empty. It's a faithfulness to keep praying and keep, and keep believing and keep fasting and just keep believing that God is doing something. It's just a faithfulness. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, keep being faithful. Turn to your neighbor and say, keep casting, keep casting, keep casting, keep casting. You don't catch in the same season. That you cast. There are times where you will cast for years before you catch. Oh, they don't like this, Holy Ghost. <laughs> they don't like it. You want the immediate catch, but you don't realize what the casting is developing in you. You don't realize what the casting is doing in your heart. You don't realize what the casting is doing in your spirit. It's working out all those things that you needed. You, it's working out all those things that you thought you needed. And God's like, keep casting. I'm working out that thing that you don't need. I'm working Because when you catch what I'm about to send your way, you need to be who I need you to be so that you can handle the catch that's coming your way. And you don't start tripping thinking it's about you, thinking you did it, because it's only going to be by my hand. So keep casting, son. Keep casting, daughter. Stay faithful to pray. Stay faithful to serve. I know you've been doing it for some years, but keep casting. It's not by man's opinion that I reward you. It's by my hand. I see every secret thing. I see every private moment, and I reward better than man can reward. So keep casting. There is a catch coming soon. Somebody shout, keep casting. You got to keep casting. You got to keep casting. I, I don't want to just do it when there's only people looking. I got to cast when there's nobody watching. I'm tired, though. Sometimes I get tired from casting all night but catching nothing. 
Some of us are in that place where we don't know if we have the energy or faith to cast the net again. And today you came saying, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I don't know if i got another cast in me. I don't know if I can go back home and have that conversation. I don't know if I can sit down at that table and <clears throat> look them in the eyeballs knowing what they said, what they did. Amen. Knowing what went wrong. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I got another cast in me. Amen. And you don't realize what will happen if you just cast one more time. That's what Peter did. What if he would have said, uh, I'm done casting. This ain't the time for it. I'm done. I don't have any more casting left in me, Jesus. He would have missed out on the greatest thing that ever happened in his life. Cast one more time. One more time. One more time. I'm going to cast. Hmm. And it was the faithfulness to keep showing up. Because watch this. Because they went out the night before and cast it again, it looked like a failure. I'm about to run all over this church and outside. <laughs> it looked like a failure. They see. It looked like a failure because if you look over to the side and see some boats up on the shore and you see fishermen with nothing in the net, oh, they had an unsuccessful fishing trip. But it was because they were casting all night. It positioned them for where they needed to be in the morning. Did you hear what I just said? It's because they were casting all night and they came in tired that positioned them in the morning when a, a teacher named Jesus stood on the shore and was looking around for something to help him make an impact. And he looked around at what looked like a failure to people. Oh, those are some fishermen who didn't catch nothing. I know them. I saw them last night when they was leaving to go out to the, to, the, to the waters to catch fish. They didn't catch nothing. Here they are. They ain't got nothing in their net. But it was the success of positioning and being in the position for what was next. See, you don't realize your casting that looks like a failure may be positioning you for where you need to be next. And just because they don't know your name now, Just because the business isn't thriving now, just because the marriage might be in a hard place right now, does not mean that your faithfulness to keep showing up is not positioning you for the Lord to do something significant that you've never seen before. Come on, shout, keep casting. Your casting is positioning you. If they had not been faithful to go out that night, they would not have been in the position the next morning. Some of y'all are asking, when, Lord? And he's like, go out again tonight and just cast. You'll be where you need to be when you come back in. Let me show you what casting looks like. I mean, you really want me to show you what casting looks like? Y'all got my picture? Put that picture on all screens. That ain't me. That's Bishop Jeffrey Lee Poole. That's who that is. And a LaDainian Thomason Charger jersey that's three times too big for him. And an Air Jordan hat turned around backwards with some Oakley tinted shades on and some Air Jordan 7s. I know the details. Y'all look at that. That's what casting looks like. See, y'all, see, 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 we think this is casting. And in part, yes, I get it. It's a method. But this is casting. Standing in the middle of a parking lot on North Davis Drive. Talking to some people who just happen to be walking by. Y'all gonna hear what I'm saying. He could have been at home enjoying time playing in the backyard with his two sons. But nope, he said, family, we're going to lead some people to Jesus today. 
but I'm sure I'm there not paying attention. I can tell you that right now. I'm somewhere bothering somebody. That's what I'm doing at that scene. But that's what casting looks like. It's not glamorous. It's not sexy. It's out in the middle of a parking lot. Speakers out there, RJ. Sound technicians in the back. Because casting takes work. Stuff just don't appear. You got to do the work to get out in the water, throw the net over, bring the net back in, and let's do it all over again. That's what casting looks like. It looks like people looking at you don't have the time of day for you. Or so you think. Because in that crowd was a man named Daniel Rios. Now, some of y'all don't know who Daniel Rios is. He is a pastor in Florida now, but he was a not saved person at this point in the journey. And he didn't attend our church. He didn't want nothing. He was, I don't know what he was doing at that time. He was doing something not for Jesus. But yet, somebody was faithful to stand behind a choir podium with some notes that he had probably studied all week for to come out and preach to a crowd he didn't know was going to show up. I don't know if fish are going to jump in this boat. I'm just going to throw the yeah. net. See, that's where some of y'all are afraid to get to because you want to know the fish are there before you throw the net. Yeah. You want to know you're going to have success before you throw the net. And I just came to tell you, sometimes casting looks like showing up in a parking lot and bringing the whole family with you and bringing the church with you and saying, we're about to have church right here in this parking lot on a Saturday morning, and we're about to cast the net. And even if any fish don't jump in this boat, nevertheless, I wish I could get some people to help me. Nevertheless, I will let down the net. If nothing jumps in this boat today, I'm going to come back next week with a nevertheless in my spirit, and I'm going to let down the net again. And if nothing happens that week, I'm going to come back next week, and I'm going to let down the net again and again and again because that's what I'm called to do. I'm called to cast. It's on him to bring the fish. It's on him to make it jump in the boat. It's on him to bring the breakthrough. He's just looking for faithful people that will keep casting. Hey, look, 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 look. Put it back up. Put it back up. In that crowd, Daniel Rios is walking by. He's not even in the crowd. He's just walking through the parking lot. I think he had a dime bag on him. I'm sure of it, knowing Daniel at that time. <laughs> if he was here, I'd, he'd be all right. <laughs> and Daniel just walks into the parking lot and he hears something. Right. Huh? What is this? Was he with his, he was with somebody. He was with his wife. Walk into the parking lot. <laughs> and they hear, they hear a word. Because somebody was obedient to let Jesus use their boat. Come on. And they hear something. And that day, in that setting, Daniel Rios gave his life to Jesus. Woo. Daniel Rios, who would not have had an opportunity to jump in the boat, yeah. had somebody not casted them there. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Daniel starts riding the bus to church. Because from that day, they could sign up to ride on a bus that we would come and pick them up. Wow. Daniel would ride the bus every week to church. From that point, he started serving. From that point, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. He started serving and, and doing a little more and doing a little more. <clears throat> and then at that point, he, started, he served for a few years or whatever it was. And then he just started being faithful and faithful and faithful and faithful to the point this crazy joker hired him on staff. You know why? Because that's what Jesus did. 
Jesus went and found people and said, come work for me. Oh, my God. I mean, that's what I need to do. Just hire some roughnecks or something. And then we'll convert them. Hey, just come work. You'll get saved later, but I just... <laughs> just put the blunt out before you come in. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> See, some of y'all, y'all y'all would leave the church. They have somebody who has a... But if Jesus was leading this church, half of y'all wouldn't be here. You know why? Because his commitment is too much for some of us. Ooh, we. Daniel starts working on staff. He becomes the youth pastor. He put him in charge of kids. Ex-drug dealer. I think he was in a gang in Ohio. Walking through a parking lot that was empty before the net got there. See, a boat pulled up. Oh, I'm about to run. And now, Daniel, through the leading of the Holy Ghost, worked here for years. Faithful, honorable, served. Wasn't looking for a platform. Is now a pastor in Florida leading a church. You know what happened? He got caught on the shore and then he got launched into the deep. That's why I wanted you to see what casting looks like. So the next time you get discouraged and you feel like that nobody's listening, nobody's grabbing a hold of it, nobody's following, you're not being successful. I want you to think about a pastor of a church in a parking lot on a Saturday morning talking to a handful of people, thinking you're not making a difference, but little do you know the impact you would make that day would span over generations. I think that's a good stopping point to give God praise. Right there. Just give a praise break. Right there. The faithfulness of God is too good. The faithfulness of God is too powerful. Hallelujah. All right, sit down. I got to fit. Y'all like, he ain't done yet? No, I'm not. <laughs> this thing been brewing in me all week. Launch out to the deep. Let down your net for a catch. He lets down the net. All of a sudden, hmm, the Bible says, when they had done it, they caught a great number of fish. Their way caught nothing. God's way caught the multitude. And not just a little bit either. Because God don't know how to give anything with just a little bit. God gives stuff overflowing. Even his own spirit, he gives us a river. God don't give ponds. He gives rivers. Some of y'all didn't catch that. He gives rivers of living water. Some of y'all got a pond and it's stagnant. God said, I didn't give you a pond. I gave you a river. He don't know how to give anything halfway. God gives things to overflow. Somebody say overflow. And, 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 and it's so much, the net starts breaking. Hey! We need y'all over here. There's so many fish over here. We got rainbow trout. We got some catfish. Dad, they got salmon. Not farm raised either. All kinds of fish are not just in the net. They're jumping in the boat. So much so, it's breaking the net. Translation, it's breaking the limitation. If you caught this, Peter said, at your word, I will let down the net. Singular. I'm going 
We'll take a lap. <laughs> Verse 5. At your word, I will let down the net. Jesus said in verse 4, let down your. Class, let's read it again, please. <laughs> he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your. Net. Okay, I'm just making sure he said net. Verse 5. Simon answered. We've told all night. Yeah, got it. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the. Jesus said, let down the nets, because he knows what's coming. Yeah. Peter don't meet him with his expectation. Yeah. Peter said, all right, you said nets. I'll, I'll throw a net out there. And it's his expectation, because I wonder if he would have thrown nets, would his net have broke? And some of us, we are just being a little obedient, and we want to do a little bit, and you're frustrated because your net is breaking when you know the Lord told you, give a thousand, don't give a hundred. Oh, y'all don't like that kind. Y'all don't like that. Y'all don't like it. You don't like it. When he told you to do something all the way, and you said, I'll throw a net out there. I'll do it. It, it, don't, it don't make sense to throw nets, Jesus. I'll, th I'll throw a net. I'll do a little bit. I'll, I'll pray a little bit, and I'll, I'll put it aside. I I'll give this way. I'll show up that way. I I I'll pray for him. I'm not going to have a conversation with him. Okay. Ooh, all right. okay. Can I just stand in the distance and pray for him and not actually go make things right? Wow. Ooh-wee. He said Nets. And some of us are just throwing a net. And he said, nets. Would have the net broke if he would have just did it? Yeah, this side right here is with me. If he would have just did it right the first time. And the net is breaking, and they got to call over their partners. Because you think your impact is just for you. God never blesses your boat just for your boat. How many want to live in the overflow of God's blessing so much so you can pay other people's debts off? I said, you want to live in the place where your boat has so much blessing jumping into it that you got to go find somebody. Say, Lord, who can I bless? Lord, you've, get, you've been too good to me. I have overflow. Who can I go and bless? Lord, send somebody my way. Hey, there's blessing over here. There's favor over here. He's brought stuff into my house that I don't deserve, but I know there's some people connected to me who need some resources, who need some help. So, God, you've blessed me, so let me go bless. Hey, come help. We got some fish over here. And there's plenty to go around. It's not just for me. God is telling me to give it to you too. And there's going to be more after that because he never runs out. He never runs out. That's why you can't be afraid to sow. You can't be afraid to serve. You can't be afraid to share the gospel with somebody because he never leaves you depleted after you've given it. He always knows how to restore. He knows how to replenish. He knows how to bless. Hallelujah. My God. Come on, high five three people and say there's plenty in the boat. Come on, tell them there's plenty in the boat. I said there's plenty in the boat. You better go find some other partners. Hey, there's plenty. There's plenty. You don't know who you're sitting next to. You're sitting next to a miracle yourself. You're sitting next to a need meter. You're sitting next to somebody who's been given the grace of God and been blessed by the hand of God. 
You don't have to go hungry. You don't have to drive home praying that you don't run out of gas because you ain't got nothing left to put in the tank. I've been blessed. Let me bless you. I've been blessed. Let me sow into you. This boat and this net breaking wasn't just for me. It was for everything connected to me. Hey, somebody shout, I caught something. I caught something. Play, Arjun. I'm almost done with my introduction. I'm kidding. They signal to their partners in the other boat. Your impact isn't just for you. Huh. Write this down. Strong partnerships create stronger nets. We're about to feed thousands of people for Thanksgiving. It's called Feed the City. We can't do that just within this church. We can make a little impact with just the people in this room. But it takes strong partnerships. Partnerships like Walmart. Partnerships like local grocery stores. Partnerships like the Board of Education. Because strong partnerships create stronger nets. Some of you are trying to fulfill your dream by yourself and God is tr trying to tell you, he's trying to alert you that strong partnerships create stronger nets. That's why we don't try to compete with the church down the street. I'm not in competition with pastor so-and-so. I'm, I'm not in competition with pastors down the street. I'm not, I'm not trying to watch their stuff and figure out how we can do it better. Because I'm not in competition. Because we all are in the same boat. And I thank God because he's breaking that competitive spirit over churches in this region. You'd be amazed at how many pastors we're talking to each other through text, encouraging each other on Sunday mornings. Hey, go preach the word of God. We pray people get saved in your church. And, we're, and it's, a, it's people... Just yesterday... A local church hit me up saying, hey, do y'all got this particular resource so we can use it for this outreach? We checked, and we we're like, hey, if we have it, we'll let you do it. But we didn't have it, but it's that kind of conversation going on. Because we're all in the same boat. This isn't the Crips and the Bloods, y'all. Like, that's your set. This is my set. Got gang signs and everything. Just we're all in the same boat. Amen. It's the the church, Amen. the kingdom. Amen. And they signal to their partners. Hey, there's there's about 170,000 people in Houston County. Y'all come over here. What can we do to reach them? How can we cast a bigger net? How can we pull the net in? And right in the midst of that atmosphere, Peter, with fish still flopping behind him, the first thing he thinks about is falling at the feet of Jesus. Salmon is all around him. Still flopping. His first action is to fall down at the feet of Jesus. And he says, I am a sinful man. Get away from me. Translation, I don't deserve this. I just want to ask a question. You ever get a blessing so big in your life, you say, God, I don't know if I... You know why you're telling yourself that? Because you know you. You know what goes on in here. And you're basing the size of your blessing off of something you're judging yourself on. And he says, I don't deserve this. And Jesus says, don't be afraid. From now on, you're going to catch men. 
you're going to go catch people. I brought you all the way out into this deep just to show you your next level. I wanted to see if you were going to be obedient enough and be faithful enough to do what I asked you to do. Year after year, month after month, week after week, day after day, if you're going to be faithful to cast. And now, no longer are you going to catch the same target. You're going to use the same gift, but you're going to hit a different target this time. You're going to use what I put in you. You know that thing you do that everybody asks? How do you do that? You just make it look so easy. That's an indicator. That's a gift from God. And he wants to redeem people who are using it in a manner that might be ungodly. And he wants to redeem it for his kingdom. I'm not saying everybody becomes a pastor. We don't need... Let me be careful what I'm about to say. Jesus. Uh, we need people in the business world. That's your pulpit. We need people in education. We need people in law enforcement. We need people in the arts. We need people in music. We need people in Hollywood. We need people... We need people in different and in, in sports. We need people in, 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 in all these places. We need people in the, in, in the judicial system. We need people in the political system. We need people there. Everybody's not called to a platform that looks like this. Your pulpit might be the office that you work from. It's amazing, like, man, people will, and that, this isn't everybody's story, but sometimes people who think they're called to ministry no, you just have a gift. And maybe God wants to utilize that on, in a different space. Hmm. I'm not going to stop right there. Somebody say, I caught something. James and John are the partners of Simon Peter in this fishing industry. And the Bible says they were there and they were all astonished at the catch. The Bible says, once they're done, let me read it. It says, from now on you will catch fish. Verse 11, so when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now listen, this is the biggest catch in the history of this fishing industry right here in Galilee. I'm talking about the biggest catch. And the next thing these young men do is walk up to their dad, who is the owner, and says, uh, we're, gonna, we're leaving. We're quitting, and we're going with this guy. <laughs> but look at all these fish. Do you see what you just caught? You'd be stupid. You'd be stupid to move to that city. You'd be stupid to get into that industry. You'd be stupid to start what you're about to say. You'd be stupid. Don't you see all these fish? And you're going to leave all that and follow him? Yes, because I'd rather be with the one who brought the fish into the boat in the first place than stay with... Do you hear what I'm saying to you? I'd rather be with the one who can bring the blessing than just with the blessing itself because once this blessing gets ate up, and I don't move with the... 
and I don't move with the one who called me, and I don't move with the one who's leading me, and I don't move with the one who's calling me to go further, if I just stay with the material, if I just stay with the fish I caught, if I just stay with the success, that's going to dry up at some point, and I'm going to be looking for more purpose. But if I move with the one who gives me purpose, there will always be fish. There will always be fish jump to a mountainside one day when Jesus is preaching and everybody's getting hungry and all they got is five loaves and two fish or two fish and five loaves. I never know. And he says, hey, I'm going to use y'all to go deliver all this food. Have 5,000 men, it said. 5,000 men. If women are there, you double that number. So we're looking at 10,000 people. And he uses 12 people to go deliver the food. And he delivers the food and the fish out there. And the Bible says there were 12 baskets. 12. 12. Because there were 12 disciples and there was a basket left over for each and every one of them. I'm trying to tell somebody, you can stay with the fish. You can get excited about the blessing and you should. But at some point, you got to move with the blessor. You got to move with the one who's able to multiply, who's able to bring it in the middle of a wilderness because that fish may dry up. People will leave you. People will go. People will come and people will go. People will leave. But as long, Charles, as I stay with the one who knows how to bring more people, who knows how to connect me to the right place, I will never go without. There will always be fish. Stand to your feet. Come on, somebody shout, I caught something. Hallelujah. And they left everything and followed him. Now, this is the part that trips me out. This is the part I've been wrestling with all week. I mean, I've been like, what is this? Let me, can I show you? Y'all good? How many Falcons fans we got? I like to keep you on your toes and ask you questions. You're like, what is he talking about? What is the last verse of chapter, or uh, the story, verse 11? They left, they pulled the boats up, left everything, and what? They followed him. And so when I've read this story over and over, because in Matthew's gospel and in Mark's gospel, it doesn't flesh the story out this way. It just says Jesus was walking by and saw fishermen washing their nets and said, come follow me. And they followed him. It doesn't tell the story like Luke's telling it. That's why you got to read every gospel. It gives you a different lens. With me? And so every time I've read this story, I'm thinking this is the first time Jesus and Simon Peter have met. I'm thinking this is the first time, Joe, that Jesus is meeting Peter when he gets on his boat. Go back a chapter in Luke 4, verse 38. Luke 4, verse 38. Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever, and they made request of him concerning her. So he stood over her, rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately, this is going to happen for some of y'all today, immediately you're going to get up and serve. There needs to be something immediately is happening here today. You've been coming, eating from the buffet, and God says today it's time for you to get up and serve. It's time for you to help in productions. It's time for you to serve in kids, mom and dad, who's kids are being blessed by great people and kids ministry. It's time for you to serve in the youth. It's, it's time for you to get up and serve. That's the only way this ministry has gone forward in 35 years. It's people who got up and served. People who were sick emotionally. People who were sick mentally. People who were sick physically. People who were sick spiritually got up and served. But that ain't the end. Watch. It says she got up and served. So I'm thinking... When Jesus got in his boat, that was the first time they met. Uh-oh. -uh. According to Luke, Jesus went to Simon Peter's house. So my question becomes, how come the day Jesus healed his mother-in-law, why didn't he follow him then? 
right? Is that a valid question? Because if I'm sitting there, and I know that in those days, if you got a fever, it's a wrap. Like, this, this fever is probably going to take you out. And I see this woman, who I love and care about, go from deathly ill to getting up, hopefully she washed her hands, and serving my food. Well, for me, that seems like that's enough. Hey, I'm, I'm going to hang out with you. If you can do that, I'm going to follow you. I got some good health insurance with you. But he doesn't. He goes fishing in chapter 5. And it's that moment Jesus gets into his boat. And this is, I believe, what the Holy Spirit is showing me. That Peter was in proximity to the power of God when he came to his house. And he encountered the power of God. Just like all of us, we come to church on Sunday, we encounter the power of God. As people come to get ministered to, the lives are being touched and changed, burdens are being lifted, hearts are being mended. There's things happening every single week. And there's many of us in proximity to the power of God, just like Simon Peter was. He sat there and watched someone's life get changed. He sat there and watched someone else's life be transformed right before his eyes. But yet he doesn't follow Jesus immediately. Because he experiences the power of God. But he does not start following Jesus until he hears the call of God. He saw the power. Oh, praise God. That's awesome. Let me go back to what I was doing. And Jesus is like, nope, I came to your house. I'm getting in your boat next. And then it just like Jesus to keep getting a little closer, to get a little closer, to pull him a little closer and a little closer. And for some of you, he's came to your house. You grew up in church. You know all the words to say. You know what scriptures to say. You know what to do. You know when to clap. But today the Lord is saying, I'm calling you. I'm calling you deeper. I'm calling you deeper, sir. I'm calling you deeper, ma'am. I'm calling you further. Yes, you have experienced the power, but now, now I'm making a call. Will you accept the call? And it says they forsook everything. When he heard the call and he said, I'm going to catch men now. I'm going to catch people. That's what I'm going to do. When he heard that, he said, all right, I'm going to follow you for the rest of my days. And today, the thing that some of us need to catch is the calling. We need to catch the calling. We need to catch the vision. There's some people, you know you're called, but you haven't stepped out of the boat yet. You know you're called, but you still want to go back fishing. You know you're called, but you haven't made that step, the faith that you know you need to make. Today is the day, and the Holy Spirit is here, and he's calling you. He's calling you. Every head bowed, every eye closed right now in this moment. Come on. Lord, I pray right now over every heart and every mind. Lord, they hear the call. Today there's some people who need to accept the call that you're making. The call of salvation. The call that says, yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. There's some people I'm talking to right now. Yeah, 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 thank you, Holy Ghost. You feel disqualified. You're disqualifying yourself. Disqualification is the label you've been living under. I want you to move out of your seat now. Hallelujah. Disqualification. We break that today. We break every label that says you're disqualified. Every label that you have allowed to live on your life that says you're not enough. You won't make it. You can't do it. You can't, you can't be called. No, that's a lie from the enemy. It breaks today. Somebody say it breaks today. I said that limitation breaks today. Whole families, my God. I said whole families, generations, the net is breaking today. The limitation is breaking today. That disqualification, Bishop, get behind him, start prayer. Pray for him, pray for him. 
that disqualification breaks today. Come on, come on. I need some intercessors praying right now. Living under disqualification. The second, you're living under defeat. You're living a defeated lifestyle, thinking it's never going to happen for you, that it's never going to break through for you, and you've settled into this defeated way of living. Your language is filled with defeat. You keep telling yourself, I'll never be healed. I'll never see success. I'll be just like my dad. I'll be just like my mom. It's going to keep going with me. The devil is a liar, and today the Lord wants to pull you out of defeat and bring you up into triumph. Who am I talking to? If I'm talking to you, move out of your seat now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I ain't here to play games with the adversary, with the devil, because he is keeping some of us limited and we're believing the lies. And you believe the lies so long, you have made it your truth. But today, the Bible says the truth shall set you free. And it's the truth of Jesus Christ that has caused us to live in triumph disqualified, defeated. You're living defeated. I say it breaks today. Defeat breaks today. Self-limitations break today. Disqualified, defeated. Third person, depleted. Depleted. You're depleted. You're drained. You're the chief, come here. Hurry up. Come on, come on. We're praying for you. You're depleted. Jessica, come here. Hurry up. You're depleted. Come stand right here. Bishop, don't lay hands on you. We're going to pray for you. Jessica, you're going to lay hands on Chief. Y'all going to pray for Chief right now. Depleted. I said depleted. I declare the joy of the Lord is our strength. Pray for him. Pray for him. We declare strength. How many know there's strength in the joy of the Lord? Strength, Terrence, Terrence, come on, pray for some people. Disqualified, defeated, depleted. He's breaking the limitations. Right here, Terrence, right here. Pray with James over this, this couple right here. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, the Lord's doing some work. I said the Lord's doing some work. Patrick, come here. Jason, come here. Hurry up. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Both of y'all. Pray for this family right here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pray for them. The Holy Ghost is doing something in this house today. The Holy Ghost is doing something in this house today. Come on, y'all worship team. Worship, worship, sing it. Come on. Come on. Let's just worship.
Some of y'all need a fresh outpouring of God's presence. I'd say, Lord, fill me up. That's all I would do right now in this moment. If I were you, I would say, Lord, fill me again. Lord, fill me again. Lord, fill me again. Come on, come on, come on. Lord, fill us again. 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 body. Come on, if you need healing in your physical body, move to this altar. Pastor, what are you doing? We're praying. We're letting the Holy Ghost do some things that we can't do. We need the presence of God. Come on, move to this altar. Move to this altar. Move to this altar.
Yeah, hold up. Come back to that. Hold on. The Bible says in James chapter 5 to anoint those who are sick with oil. Does the oil do something? No. It's the, it's, it's, it represents something. Amen? It represents something. And we're going to follow what the Bible says. It says lay hands on those who are sick. Have the elders of the church. We have a prayer team right here. Y'all start praying for them. And we're going to come out and pray for you. And we believe in the healing. How many believe that God is still a healer? How many know there's going to be testimonies from this moment of cancer disappearing? Of asthma being healed? Somebody's breathing issues? Somebody's neck issue that happened from a car wreck that hadn't been able to be fixed is about to be put into a line. Not about. It is. It is so. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The healing power of God. That is your portion. That is your portion. Somebody say, healing is my portion. Be made whole. I said, be made whole. Be made whole. And he said, these signs will follow those who believe. They will lay hands on the sick, and they shall. It's not a might be situation. He said they shall be healed. Anybody got a shall be faith? Come on. They shall be healed. Come on. Tumors, generational sickness is cut off now in the name of Jesus. Tumors are disappearing under the power of God. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Come on, you need to be praying. You might be new to an atmosphere like this. What do I do in this moment? Pray. This is the time to exercise your prayer language, to exercise your prayer life, and begin to say, God, heal. We thank you for healing. Lord, we're not hoping they're healed. We know, according to your word, it says, by your stripes, we are healed. In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray. Sometimes it takes a pressing. Sometimes it takes a pressing, a pressing, a breaking through. Come on, something's breaking. There's limitations being lifted. There's limitations being lifted. Hey, come on, come on, come on. Limitations are being lifted. Generational things that have been passed on. It ends with you. It ends with you. Ah, we speak to that throat issue right now. The throat issue under the power of God. In the name of Jesus is healed. Hearing issues are opening up. Hearing issues are opening up under the power of the Holy Ghost. Hearing, hearing, hearing. He opens the deaf ear. I said he heals the deaf ear. Yeah, 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 right there. Come on, it's breaking. Right there. It's breaking. Come on. I said it's breaking. Sickness, we rebuke you. Infirmity, we rebuke you. We are called to thrive. This is still the year of thriving. This is still the year to thrive. We rebuke sickness. We rebuke the devourer. We rebuke the devourer. right there. Come on. Musicians are ministering right now through how they're playing. It's breaking. Come on. I don't, I don't, I don't mess around with this stuff. And I'm. But I'm trying to, just as I'm hearing things, want to make sure I'm being obedient. But I just, I felt the Lord say somebody's medical bills are about to be reduced. 
in the name of Jesus. I feel that. I'm careful to say that. I'm just telling you. I say that with fear and trembling. Medical bills about to be reduced. That's all I hear. That's all I heard. Come on, come on, come on. Right there. Play, RJ. You play. Come on, you play. Come on, it's breaking, it's breaking, it's breaking. It's breaking. It's breaking. Come on. I said something's breaking. This is an atmosphere of breakthrough. It's breaking. Holy Spirit. Minister Holy Spirit. The presence of the Lord is strong in this place today. He's doing a new thing. Come on. He's doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing. Thank you for your presence. How do I respond to this moment? We thank God for his presence. That's what we do. You may be new to following Jesus. What do I do right now? What do I do? I thank God for what he's doing. People are being touched right now under the power of God. Who? From now on, remember that in the story, from now on, from now on is happening right now. That's from now on happening right now. That is never going to be the same. It's never going to be the same. From now on, from now on, from now on. If you want to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we've been praying. But you want to know, you, you want to know him. Say, yes, I want to follow Jesus. I want to pray that prayer. I want to say yes to everybody. Just stay where you're at. Nobody, nobody moving in this moment. This is a power. This is what God's doing right now. I just want us to reverence it. If you want to know Jesus, today's the day. Today's the day. I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you, if you don't mind, why don't you grab a neighbor's hand real quick, if you don't mind doing that. Or you wanna put it on their shoulder, whatever you wanna do. I just want you to connect with somebody next to you. Here's what I want you to do. If you wanna say yes to Jesus, I'm just gonna count to three, and when I say three, I want you to, if you wanna say yes, just squeeze that person's hand or just kinda squeeze their shoulder a little bit, let them know, yeah, I wanna do that. One, two, three. Do it now. Come on, if you want to say yes to Jesus. Come on, someone squeezed your hand or they 
squeeze your shoulder. Would you say, hey, I'm going to lift your hand. Let's lift up your hand together. Come on. If somebody did that. Come on, lift it up. Thank you. Thank you. You ain't got to be embarrassed. We're not here to embarrass anybody. That's not what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. His hands up. Here's what, now, here's what I want you to do. You can put your hands down. Here's what I want you to do. You're going to need to take a step. Peter had to step out of the boat to start following Jesus. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seat as a symbolic act to say, Lord, I'm coming with you. Will you do that right now? And I want the people that had your hand with you, I want them to walk with you. You're not coming alone, and we're going to shout for you right now. Y'all get out of your seat. Just come down. We're not going to embarrass you. Come on, just step out of your seat. Come on, I said somebody sh shout. Come on, life. There's new life. Come on, make way, make way, make way, make way. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. You just look at me, just look at me. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Yeah. I said somebody shout right now. Come on. They're going to hand you a little booklet. It's got uh, some great information in it. It's got a little card in there. Put your name on that. Give it back to the team. In fact, we're going we're gonna to help you out here in just a second. But we're going to pray a prayer together. And, and nobody in this church prays alone. Right? So what are we doing? All right, what are we doing? Everybody came down here look at me. What are we doing? The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that he died for you and that he was buried for three days. And on the third day, he was resurrected by the power of God. If you believe that, you confess that, it says that you become a new creature. It says that you become a new person. And when I prayed that prayer, the old Jordan, my God, was back there somewhere. And now there's a new Jordan that stands before you. But look, look, I got to confess Jesus every day of my life. It's a, it's a daily confession. And I got to walk it out. Okay, I got to walk out this, this life with Jesus. Are there going to be issues? Yeah. There are going to be some problems along the way. Absolutely. Life's not perfect. But now you have a community of people that are rooting for you. You have people that love you and want to see you win. And we care about you. So I want you to repeat after me. Everybody say it. We're going to say it together. Say, Jesus, I need you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe. You died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you were buried. But on the third day, by the power of God, you were resurrected, giving me new life. And now, and now, I leave my old life and pursue a new life with you. I'm yours forever, Jesus. Let your spirit come alive in me now. Amen. Come on, somebody clap, celebrate. We appreciate you watching so much. As a matter of fact, why don't you just come join us live on a Sunday morning? We'd love to meet you in person. For more information about Hope Church, follow us on social media, go to our website, and there you can find out how to get involved at Hope Church, when our next baptisms will be, and how you can give and support this ministry financially. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.